Uh, when I was about 10, I broke my right wrist, which saw me in a cast for about six weeks, I believe. When I was very young, I chopped the t uh, tip of my finger off with a tomahawk and the GP just simply bandaged it up and it grew back on again. When I was about seven years old, I fell out of the tree and broke my collarbone. So then they put it in a splint. When I was young, um, playing footy, and I broke my hand and they put a cast on it. I think I wore that cast for about six or eight weeks. In the Iran-Iraq war, I was taken captive by some gunmen and I thought I was going to die. And at that moment, something triggered in me a hyper response and that condition has remained with me ever since. I had uh, mental health issues throughout a number of deployments, not just on return from deployments, but certainly it was an injury very hard to understand and comprehend, akin to being in the darkest chasm without any possible horizon or, or orientation and uh, feeling completely lost and alone. I have a mental illness, which is an invisible wound. I've been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder and major depressive disorder. It's very difficult to, to describe something that's happening on the inside when no one can see the injury. If you're dealing with the body, you can observe physical signs, but with mental health, there are often no outward signs. Mental health is more complicated than just the absence of mental illness. Mental health requires that people contribute proactively to maintaining what would be a good mental health. And this requires things like staying away from alcohol and drugs, making sure you're sleeping well, making sure you're socialising, exercising and eating well, keeping up with hobbies and activities. And these things tend to prevent mental illness and also treat pre-existing mental illness. We very much uh, consider that mental health, there's a lot of focus on mental health out there, but mental health is just one of a component, uh, one, one component of a, a general health situation. Health is a state of complete physical, mental and social balance and well-being. We know that people who have had military service are more likely, considerably more likely, to develop mental illness than in the Australian community. Veterans are more likely to develop mental health issues probably because of two critical variables. One is they spend an inordinate amount of time away from home, loved ones and a stable environment. And two is because they're in in situations and in environments where they need to make very, very important decisions that have impact on their lives and the lives of many others. When you're joining the military, uh, basic training and, and routine military life is, is a very challenging role, um, and explicitly so, in order to build you up to manage the adversities that are potentially to come into the future. And we think about some of those stressful events or potentially traumatic events that might be experienced in military life that pose risk factors for mental health. It's important we think not only around deployment but also a broader array of stressful and traumatic events. Recently we've just had published um, the outcomes of the first kind of comprehensive prevalence study of mental health. Um, in the ex-serving community who have discharged or transitioned out of defence in the previous five years. 75% of individuals transitioning out of the services for whatever reason will in their lifetime experience some form of diagnosable mental illness. And the most common of those are post-traumatic stress and post-traumatic stress disorder which was rates of about 17%. Um, and a broad array of anxiety problems or anxiety disorders. We also see elevations in rates of depression at around 12% and also in alcohol problems around 13%. In simple terms, post-traumatic stress disorder is the difficulty an individual experiences resolving a very difficult situation that they've been exposed to in their life. Anxiety can be described as an individual worrying about 
something that isn't really there. And that worry becomes persistent and may cause other symptoms. Depression is characterised by people having low, sad or irritable mood and this causing significant dysfunction in their ability to carry out their normal life activities. Addiction is when an individual engages in a pattern of behaviour that is causing them clear negative consequences and yet they continue. It's critical that someone keeps a close eye on the holistic approach, the approach to the whole person and that includes the psychological and mental side of treatment. The challenge for any clinicians dealing with veterans is that every veteran has complex health situations. You know, they've got injuries to their minds, they've got injuries to their body, they've got injuries to their souls, they've got relationship difficulties, they're struggling with identity or purpose. So there's a complex health situation there that needs to be addressed. Within the military, mental illness is perceived on the whole as a weakness. I think as a result of this, volunteering mental illness is often seen as a barrier to ongoing employment in the military, your ability to deploy or your likelihood to be promoted. I'm often asked about what measures we can use to decrease mental health stigma uh, within the military because it is a long-term cultural integrated problem. And certainly we see this as a critical issue around mental health within environments like the military. I think that we can destigmatize that area of mental health if we were to name it for what it is, and that is an integral part of our humanness, just as our relationships, our professional world, our physical being, our future focus. These are simply integral parts of our humanity. What we need is that somebody can put up their hand and say they have a mental illness and it's going to be treated like a physical problem with rehabilitation first and I can then come back into work and do the job I previously did. There is a fear amongst military personnel that conditions like anxiety, depression and particularly PTSD are permanent and cannot be cured. This is incorrect and certainly all of these conditions are eminently treatable and can be treated to the point where they no longer affect an individual's life. Recovery is possible. The symptoms of stress, the challenges that the family member has endured do not have to be pervasive, enduring and lifelong. Recovery is possible. Be aware of what those symptoms or early signs of psychological distress might be and I reach out to the veterans themselves or the military serving personnel themselves as well as their families. Watch for them and if you feel they might be there, access services as soon as possible. They are all very treatable.